We are here with uh, Neda Radic, the director of Emil. Uh, hello, Neda, and thank you for joining us. Hello, and thank you for having me. Uh, Veronica wanted to ask you a few questions about uh, your short film, uh, Emil, so I'll leave the word to, to her. So, Neda, your short film is, is a coming of age of a 12 years old boy who wants to grow up uh, by emulating the behavior of uh, his mother partner. Uh, but finally, he, he took definitely his, uh, his place. Uh, so, uh, I would like to ask you, why do you sh did you choose this story, this, this topic? Well, um, one night, well, originally the story was uh, supposed to be set during winter, because one night I was walking uh, around town and I saw two guys exactly like that, uh, a little kid and, and a, uh, well, a guy who looked kind of like this. I'm not sure what he was doing really in his life, but he was wearing, you know, sweatshirts and sneakers and had this way of walking. And the boy was walking behind him and they were dragging some kind of big bags around uh, with something inside. And it, and it just started to snow and it was starting to the to, to be dark and the image looked like something i don't know it looked interesting so i started imagining okay who are they what's their background and what's their uh, how are they here where i saw them on the bus station so i sort of went backwards and in, invented the whole story and then as i was writing it i started to put myself in the kids uh, head and started to remember my own growing, growing up and um, uh, a certain person that I had uh, sort of admired when I was a kid and, and uh, who ended up kind of betraying me in a way. And, um, and this feeling of, of uh, admiration that you have as a kid that's sort of un, un, without, without any... Uh, breaks, you know, just, you, your emotions are really strong and you really uh, admire someone without thinking about it. And then when, when it suddenly changes, either you realize something or they really do something, then it all sort of flips around and then you start almost hating them with equal, uh, equal amounts of, of emotion. That's what happened to me. So uh, I started thinking, okay, maybe that's some, some, this memory is something I can kind of incorporate. But then, of course, I, uh, the, the exact uh, events and what happens, I, I sort of wrote, which didn't happen to me, but was uh, uh, so it, it is a sort of uh, ongoing problem in Croatia with uh, uh, violence, uh, violence against women and, and children. And now, uh, for the last maybe three to four years, uh, there have been some organizations that, that are trying to fight it and, and change the laws, but it's not, you know, we don't have enough safe houses, not enough psychologists, not enough uh, education, you know, and people. Uh, and also another thing that I wanted to mention was that rape isn't, that usually that does, doesn't happen in a dark alley by someone you have never seen. It's usually by someone you know, and very often by your partner. So I kind of wanted to put that inside as well. So that's how I kind of put the puzzle pieces together. Nice. Thank okay. you for uh, this, uh, this background of, uh, of the story. Uh, there is one specific scene which I really liked and uh, it is the scene when uh, Dino is lying down in the, in the trash and uh, Emil looks at him and then goes, goes forward and then again looks at him and is, is kind of thinking, do I help him or not? And in the moment where he decides that he will not help him and uh, leaves him behind and goes back home, he made a choice and uh, that is his coming of age, you know. I saw that uh, the choice to put Dino in the trash was like a symbol for like uh, what he was leaving behind, you know, an adult society that was actually not valuable, valuable as he thought. That was uh, like, you know, like something you consume and then you just have to throw it away because it's, it's, it's going, uh, you know, it's going rotten. And uh, yeah. I wanted to know about uh, 
this scene and this choice and whether you wanted to portray, you know, a part of society that was actually going rotten with this scene? Well, uh, it, it was my idea, although not in that particular scene. The idea was to sort of, the way the he explains at the beginning of the film, you know, if uh, you don't trust the state, you don't trust the police, you don't trust anyone, I know guys like that, so... Uh, that was kind of the his position is is a, a position that doesn't help the society. That was the idea. So when he sort of gets rid of him, yes, to a, to a degree, you are right. Although I I'm not sure I I, I thought it through as well as you now describe it. Uh, usually, when you watch it afterwards, other people see things I I haven't really thought about, but. Um, the, the, that particular scene was kind of really hard to shoot, really hard to write, and really hard to... Uh, when, when we found a co-production in France, the, the television, the France television was very worried that it will come off as too violent or that the boy will lose his innocence or that this line is not really right or, you know, it was very tricky to convince them that no, it, it has to stay because it, he has to not just passively sort of let it go. He has to make a statement and he has to actively make this decision and it has to be seen. We have to be able to see it and to hear it. So it was, uh, and on top of that, it was the last day of shooting, last scene to shoot. Uh, we have gone way too late. Uh, the neighbors were starting to be angry. You know, we didn't have enough time or enough. So it was all, it's kind of a blur. I just remember um, insisting insisting on this, that he has to go back and forth a few times because it has to be clear that he is not just some mean psycho, suddenly turned into psych psychopath, but that he is actually thinking about being compassionate and then deciding to not, not be that guy that uh, sort of, well, I guess he listens to advice of Dino in the end, except he, he directs it to the correct person instead of society and police and so on. Yeah. And if you were to imagine Emil as an adult, I mean, what kind of man would it be? Mm, that's an interesting question. I suppose someone like someone who does something with his hands, maybe, I don't know, someone who is uh, building something or some, some sort of, I don't know, woodworker or, or I don't know, something, someone who uses hands. I don't know why, but it feels like his energy would be best used in that way, you know, I don't know, maybe it's <laughs> unusual, but yeah. Yes, what we mean is that uh, a child with that kind of past uh, I, I, would be really different from from Dino as an adult, or maybe yes. somehow at one point, uh, maybe... Well, uh, of course, there is a possibility that you can sort of not choose the right path, but also there are many... I know a few guys like that, but they haven't uh, really ever made a c correct decision, I, uh, you know, during when they were kids, kids I knew. So I think that if you have made the correct decision as a kid, I think you, you'll be fine. I think he'll, he'll be fine. I think he'll grow up to be, to know not, not to become like that. So, you know, and be, be sort of a... Uh, someone who actively chooses to be good every day because he knows it's easy to not to kind of slip away because you know it's easy to sort of uh, uh, think of Dino as someone who is ah uh, just uh, violent and that's it but actually I have a whole backstory for him for why he's the way he is and you know we should at least I had a lot of compassion for him. And I know that he's not, he's not someone who deserves everything bad happening to him. It's just circumstance because, um, 
he, yeah, because I believe he's he's a guy who hasn't, maybe was in a, in some point at some point in his life in a position where uh, Emil was now, and he chose differently. Or, or you know, I have a whole story of him and his uh, life where he just wasn't you know making right decisions. Yes. Okay. In, in today's cinema, Neda, there are um, a lot of child characters um, we see as festival directors and, and selectors. A lot mm-hmm. of films, a lot of short films about uh, children characters. And uh, mm-hmm. the purpose of this edition was, was also to understand why, the, why it was uh, strong or important to have a child character. And also, why the choice? I mean, uh, to tell it to a child character. What was, uh, you know, your purpose in telling the story from the point of view of the child? Well, um, <clears throat> yeah, I asked myself that as well. I'm not sure. I think, uh, well, I, I have now written another short again with the children with a child and from, from her uh, perspective. I feel like children have this... Well, first of all, children are people, so we have all been children, and it's, there is, it's not that they are somehow different. You know, they are also characters same as others, just kind of smaller. <laughs> I mean, I don't see them as separate species, so I would say it's all the same people. But uh, with children, you may be have this, um, well, it's easy to identify with a child, at least kind of easier, because they, uh, we are all kind of wired to to empathize with children, because we all kind of um, have a, a possibility to be parents, and we have to have the possibility in our minds to see children as, as someone that needs taken care of. So I guess uh, it's a bit of a trick, you know, to make people empathize easier. But uh, more importantly, I think children have this way of showing uh, emotions and receiving the world in a more pure way, or maybe more less filtered, less. They haven't yet had the time to learn on all the uh ways of behaving and and masking and uh and be uh, being someone else they are still more themselves than the adults so i guess this element of of truthfulness is um is basically what uh what makes them maybe easier to 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 show the emotion and and story okay Neda, thank you for for, uh, being with us. Uh, Thank you. I hope that uh, the public will enjoy your short film. And uh, I hope it will have have, uh, a lot more screenings around the world. And uh, thank you for bringing your story to us. And yes, and compliments because it's very, very well done, and uh, also the kid did a very good job. Yes, thank you. I was, I was very proud of him. Thank and, you. Uh, we will show you the poster where uh, there is an image of uh, of a meal. Uh, ah, okay, uh, great. So, thank you for being with us, and uh, see you next time. Maybe, maybe with your next work. Thank you as well. <laughs> Hope to see you. Bye. Bye. Bye.